Good morning, everybody. And once again, as always, it's really good to be here with you today. I'm Dr. Bishop Peter Jones from the UK, and I look forward to these few moments I spend each day with you, just sharing the scripture and my understanding of the scripture. Now, I'm sure most of you know that we just we're working our way through the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew. And we just finished looking at the Lord's Prayer. And today we're going to move on to Matthew 6, verses 19 to 24. 19 to 24, which is essentially where Christ talks about laying up treasures in heaven. Let's, let's do the reading first. Do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth, where moths and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. And when you're, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. For a moment. Mm. Do you know the original text used the word mammon to stand for riches on earth? It's actually a, a broader word than the word money. And, and probably thus more accurate. However, it is a special Bible word, uh, but yet lacks the gut leveling impact of the word money. So there's sometimes, there's something I should say to be said for either translation. I mean, mammon itself did not originate as a common noun. <laughs> Mammon was the Syrian statute god of riches who had come to be worshipped throughout Canaan. The Greeks had a similar god, Plutus, from which we get the word plutocracy, government by the wealthy. And the Chinese god of wealth was extremely important. Christ writers often referred to overemphasize on things of this world, especially on luxury goods, calling such people who have them idol worshippers. So the analogy comes full circle here. Christ's words have a double meaning. Literally, do not commit idolatry by worshipping the god of riches, and figuratively do not serve the temporary baubles of this world, for you cannot serve God if you serve them. We must choose. If we are to be reborn in Christ, we must choose to serve God, and we, and we must choose not to serve money. We must abandon our natural inclinations and wants for earthly goods. We all have them. Christ could not have been any clearer or more specific about this particular idea. But the choice that we make is in our spirit. Our body does not die. And our body is not reborn. 
when we accept Christ. We are reborn in the spirit. Unfortunately, this means our body and mind continue to fight. You've heard me say many times before, the battle field for Satan is in our heads, between our good conscience and our evil conscience. And it's very much a part of what we do have control over. Oh, we all know how we struggle to follow Christ's message, to give our entire heart to God and simply abandon any attractions of the things of this earth. I mean, that is challenging. I, I, in preparing this, I had to ask myself if this was even possible. I mean, here I sit in my office and I make sure I have a comfortable chair that was probably more or less expensive chairs that I could have bought. But I decided I needed a comfortable chair to do my work. You see, we really shouldn't be discouraged by this. It doesn't mean that we're bad Christians or headed for hell. The meaning of Christ is forgiveness but the scripture does not signify that in our spirit we must love God we must love God above all the things on this earth and try our best to overcome temptations while we're in this this world you know the scripture that we just read the teaching in particular about Yai being the lamp of the soul gives us a hint on how to minimize temptations for instance if we have a weakness for jewelry and do not want to lust after it we shouldn't walk into tiffany's and look at all the diamonds but more profoundly christ seeks to change our eye to match our hearts. It is not seeing that hurts us. Our eyes is not just our physical eyeballs. It is a part of the mind that processes information. So, using the Tiffany's example, if there is something that we know causes us a problem, we should try through the Spirit to avoid such things. I have a dear friend of mine who talks about his desire for Oreos, the biscuit, lovely biscuits, but his recognition that his obsession with them was not healthy and wasn't doing him a great deal of good. And now, he tells me, he goes to great lengths to avoid being near a packet of Oreos. I, I have had similar issues that I've had to deal with. You know, light is a common metaphor for the wisdom of God and for Christ. I mean, read John one wonderful and the meaning is present here to conclude the more wisdom that we have the more wisdom that we take in through study prayer and meditation the more proof of our eye against temptation we can see beautiful necklaces we can even admire something that is beautiful without necessarily wanting it. This is what Christ refers to as a healthy eye. Let us pray. Father God, we give thanks to you for your word, which we know to be true. We ask you, Lord, to 
embed that word in our hearts so that we may have real understanding of its meaning and its implications for us. And, and let it, Lord, be the locus through which we seek to make whatever changes we have to make in our own lives. Lord, help us to fight this battle of good versus evil in our minds. Teach us, Father, to turn our eye away from those things that will tempt us. We recognise, Lord, that we may get a fleeting pleasure from such things. But what you're saying to us clearly, Lord, here, is we store up treasures in heaven. Let us not be preoccupied with money, Lord. That's a particularly difficult one for many of us. Forgive us, Father. Hear my prayers, Lord. Let my Christ come unto thee. To Jesus' name. This I pray. Amen. Okay. So, that's us moving on through Matthew. You know, the, the issue, I think, of the eye, and the point that I tried to make there, I found myself in quiet prayer after I prayed, praying about it, because it's, it's, it's a problem. I like looking at those things, and the next step on from looking at them is wanting them, and I know that's wrong. God gives me, gives me all, all that I need, all that I go to him for in faith and belief that he will deliver. Nobody said it was ever going to be easy to be a Christian. Nobody told me that. They neither told me how difficult it was going to be either. But we need to persevere. We need to run the race as best we can. And we need, of course, the knowledge of knowing that we have a Father who we can go to through Christ and speak to about where we are. Wherever you are today, whatever your trials, I pray that the Almighty God our Father keeps you from temptation, keeps you from seeking to store up treasures on earth, knowing full well that they are transitory. They will not be here when hopefully you are in heaven with our Father. Almighty God bless you. Pour out his grace upon you. Through Jesus' name, this I pray. Amen. Amen. That's me for today. God bless you all. And see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.